Give me one moment, Judge. Okay. You may have a seat, ma'am. Thank you, Judge. I will resume cross-examination by Mr. Belinkus. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to talk to you about these tape recordings. Um, on August 3rd, Michael Barrison calls 911 and the police arrive, correct? Well, we, I'm assuming yes. And after they talk to him, they come and talk to you, correct? Probably. They didn't always, but I'm assuming. At some point they talk to you, correct? Yeah, at some point the police talk to us. And on that day, you told the Washington Township Police Department that you were secretly recording private conversations, correct? Correct. Um, did they ask you any questions as to how you were doing this? Um, I don't recall. I just remember something about just make sure it's something that you own because, oh, make sure it's not attached to a phone or in a living residence because that could be considered wiretapping. And I said, no, they're not there. It's on some place that it would be considered my property and it's not attached to a phone or a living quarter or anything like that. So they said, it, okay. It's your testimony that the Washington Township Police Department is discussing the legality of what you need to do to take a recording? No, it's my testimony that they were offering insight into what to be careful about. If that's an action you're going to take, they're saying just make sure that whatever you do, you don't do these things because they're definitely illegal. Definitely, so, you were told they were definitely illegal. Or they're definitely Judge, judge definitely, I'm going to object. We, we just talked about this at the break. This, this is what was told to her, Judge. Fine. By the police, if you frame it, if you frame the question that way about what the police said, it's fine, but not, not anything further than that. Correct. So the police told you you can't record in someone's private areas, correct? In someone's, like, private home or, like, you can't bug a phone. So... They follow those instructions. Did they ask you specific questions on on how and where you were doing your recordings? No, but I was sort of like telling them because I wanted to, them I wanted them to know. I don't remember how far into it I went, but I, I wanted to be sure, like, like I said a moment ago, that I wanted to make sure everything we were doing was legal and okay. we were going about it the right way. Okay, and, and at any point in time since this incident, has the Morris County prosecutor or any representative ever questioned you about where you put these recordings and what the circumstances were behind them? I believe so. Who? Who, who, what? Who did you talk about these recordings about in the prosecutor's office? I know it was in their office, I'm sure, just, and I, the, um, just, uh, I'm not sure what the title was. Christopher Shellhorn. Um, did you tell I don't whoever else was in their office? Did you tell it was Christopher? brought up. I didn't go further. Right. Did you way. tell Christopher Shellhorn where you planted all the recordings that you made regarding this case? I don't believe I specifically discussed where they were. We didn't really want to like get into that. We we're discussing more the fact that I was almost murdered. And where was some recording on in you know where it was placed? Okay, well, isn't it a fact that you did record <coughs> conversations in a private residence? No, that is not a fact. Did you record conversations in the clubhouse? No. Did you record conversations 
in either the residence where, where Michael Barrison lived or the stable area where he lived a week or so before the shooting. I'm sorry, no, he never lived in the stable area ever. Um, he lived in the clubhouse, which there was no recordings there. But, yeah, uh, your second, the second portion of your, um, I guess, questioning is not accurate. So if maybe you could ask it again. Michael Barrison never lived in the stables. Well, he lived in the club area, correct? Which is separate from the stables, correct. to be clear. And, and correct. is it your sworn testimony mm -hmm. that you never recorded any conversations in the club area? That's correct, unless it was recorded on our person and it's one of us speaking and we were in the club area which we were not during that time so I would have to say yes it's correct that there was no conversations in the club area recorded. Great. I've been provided over 70 recordings. Okay. Where were those recordings made? My locker. Every single one? Um, no, not every single one. Some were in our own house um, somewhere in, I don't know, I don't know where else they were there. I mean, know where they weren't. I can tell you that. I know where they were not. And I know that they were in my locker when we were recording, like, an open space where anybody could be at any time. Well, again, when you say an open space, mm -hmm. is it your testimony that you secreted a recording in an area where you or Robert Goodwin were not present? Well, we were present because we had horses stable there. Well, so when you say present, I mean present during the actual conversation. But yes, if you're asking if there's conversations that happened while we are not in the actual stable area, yes, there were conversations that happened during that time. Correct. Okay, and you've indicated that you didn't do that in the club area, correct? Yes. How about Michael Barrison's private office? Did you or Robert Goodwin ever put a recorder in Michael Barrison's private office and record private conversations? No, his office is in the clubhouse, in the club area. And it's a separate just said, room, correct? Sorry, say, say it again. Just, his office is a separate room from the club area, correct? His, his office is literally inside the club area. There's a door, but it's in the club area. And again, since that was also their living area, no, we did not go ever in the living area and record anything. It was in my locker or in the area we were living at the house. So again, the answer to your question, it would be no. I'm sorry, that bumped up me being confusing. Okay, so again, in a roundabout way, you answered my question. I'm just gonna ask you specifically, mm -hmm. irrespective of how the room is positioned. Did you ever secretly record private conversations in Michael Barrison's office? No. My boyfriend ended up buying it. Rob Goodwin, correct? Yes. And uh, when did he get that recorder? It was ordered on the morning of August 31st at around 8.07 a.m. from Amazon. August 31st? I mean, sorry, July 31st. July 31st. And arrived next day? I believe arrived the next day, correct. And so Overnight. is it your recollection that over 70 recordings were made from that point on to the time of the shooting? There were two devices, I believe. I could be wrong. Um, I don't know how many recordings there are, but there could be a hundred. Still, the fact remains, this is where they were, and this is where they were not. They were in my locker. They were in the house that we were living in. We were talking to ourselves. We have that on board. But where they were not was in anybody else's living quarters including the club room, 
or any other living residents in the farm whatsoever, unless that living residence belonged to a horse, which it didn't. It was in my locker. End of. Now, you just mentioned that there were two devices. <coughs> Correct. At least, I, I believe so. I wasn't in charge of them. Okay. Who was yes. in charge of them? My boyfriend was in charge of them, but we and both they, knew where they were. Okay, and you were the one instructing him where to put the device, correct? We would discuss it together. I was, it was no like I'm instructing him or he's instructing me. We had a specific reason for them, be, for my wanting them to be in my locker, a very specific reason. Oh. I guess he had a reason too, but nevertheless, like I said, that's, that's where they were put locker which I was paying for. Did you turn no, over both of those recordings to the prosecutor's office? We turned over everything. I was sh again, I was shot and dying. The police collected what they collected. I was in a hospital for three weeks in a coma for four days. I don't know what happened during those time during that time, but certainly I had no knowledge of what the police were doing or any other office was doing. But I do know that we turned over everything that we had because it was taken upon search and seizure of the crime scene um, that unfortunately your client committed. Okay, now, with, with regards to these tape recordings, mm -hmm. when you recorded something, did you bring it back to your house and listen to what was on the tape? Sometimes. How did you listen to those recordings at your house? What device did you use? A computer, I think. I think you just put it in the computer and it plays. And you could also delete things off that with the recorder, correct? I have no idea. I'm pretty sure you could do it anyway. You could, anybody could delete something, but our goal wasn't to delete things. It was to get the information we were trying to get, which was, we thought, vital to our life and ended up exactly coming to fruition so a few days, just a few days later. In almost the exact way, I would say, it was um, heard on those audios. So, I can have a moment, Judge. Did you ever put a recording on the porch? I'm not sure which porch you're referring the to. The porch of the front of the stables. Porch of the front. No, the porch, no. Like I said, and I just, I don't mean to, like, sound like I'm being rude or repeating myself or anything not, like that. You're not, don't worry about that. I just want to let you know. The only place that the recorders were ever placed in that barn area at all was in my paid-for locker. That's it. Otherwise, it was on our person or in the apartment that we were living. And that's it. Now, whose telephone number is 973 Seven one three seven seven zero three. My father. And that's one of the persons that you claim gave you a legal opinion with regards to recording, correct? One of the people I, like, and again, said I don't really remember which said what or who said who. Okay, but I you, certainly spoke to my father a few times. And do you remember your dad things? saying on August second, two thousand and eight? has to do directly with this issue, Judge. Well, what does it matter? It's still the rules of evidence. Isn't that a hearsay statement? Judge, I, I believe it's, it's permissible to impeach her. There's a discussion with her father regarding admissibility. I mean, isn't this what we discussed at the break? No, Judge. This is a specific statement which contradicts what she said.
but <clears throat> hold on. The, the objection's over, Wolf. So go ahead and ask the question in this one area. Mr. Panarek, uh, your father's number is 973 713 7703, correct? Correct. Did you have a discussion with him on that day with regards to the on what day, I'm sorry. Yeah, that hasn't that, been made clear what August, day it is. August 2nd, 2019, <coughs> at 9.24 p.m. <coughs> With regards to him questioning the admissibility of you making these recordings. Um, yeah, but he is questioning the admissibility rather than the legality of it then I'm guessing probably spoke of whether after these recordings had been recorded, whether or not they might be admissible in a court of law. Since you just mentioned the word admissibility, I'm really pointing out that I don't think we're talking about, like, is this legal, is it not legal? We may have been, but I think the, the real crux of what we are discussing was just like you said a minute ago, the admissibility of it, meaning will this be admissible at a later date? That's what you're asking, which it seems to me that is, but okay. wrong, sorry. You were giving your father copies of these recordings, correct? Um, I don't remember. I don't really know how I would share them. I'm really not that tech savvy. Oh, isn't honestly. the fact that you're aware that your boyfriend, Robert Goodwin, had given your father a number of these texts, and you were aware of Texas uh, recordings, and you were aware of that? But on August 2nd, like I said, it was ordered the morning of July 31st. They arrived probably the next day, if we're lucky. So by August 2nd, I can't imagine there would have been very many recordings by that time. So I don't know what he could have sent in that one time, like de time period, or like a small period of time to my father. But I can't say he hasn't, so maybe he did. I honestly don't know. It wasn't me, but yeah, okay. and, if and, it happened. And when you use the term admissibility, yes. that had to do with the lawsuit that you, your father, and Robert Goodwin were talking about filing against Michael Barrison, correct? Um, probably, and not just that, probably some other things too. Now, you also made videos, put video cameras places, correct? In our living space, yes. We were planning to go away the following week with Michael, in fact, to a show, which I had signed up for. Um, it's on the USDF website. You can check it. Um, I had entries for a show the following Wednesday where Michael was to take me to a show, the one we were discussing earlier, um, in Socrates, New York, called Hits, Hits on the Hudson. And we wanted to have surveillance in the house for when we went away, since there was tension on the farm, you know, people going back and forth with their moods and tempers. So all I knew is I had a show, we wanted to have surveillance in our house that we were renting, and we had cameras, blink cameras, I believe, um, in the house for when we were not home. That was the purpose of them, so yes to that question. And when you say or said in certain posts that you have eyes and ears everywhere yes. that can't be detected, where were the eyes? Are those the, the eyes are in, the, in our house, which if no one's living there, why would they be detected unless someone's coming in? It shouldn't be. Rosanna Williams. A good friend of mine. Also, um, she is one of the best international horse sales people maybe on the, in the world. And I purchased three of my international competition horses from her. Um, and we just were very good friends and also a business friend as well. Okay. Now, when did you get these uh, cameras that you're talking about? I didn't get them. Um, my boyfriend did. I don't remember what date, but somewhere around the same time as what audios. Is it? Same somewhere, time that would be after. Somewhere, the... somewhere around the same time as audios. And you're sure of that? No, I'm not sure of that. 
That's why I said I'm not sure. I didn't get them. Okay, where did he get them at? I think you order them online, like a person would do, I'm guessing. Well, do you remember having a conversation on April 20th with Miss Williams saying on just... April 20th? I'm sorry, I just wanted to... April 20th, 2019. Mm -hmm. Just I think I think if the intention is to refresh her recollection, which she's saying she doesn't remember, she could sure, certainly be shown something to see if that refreshes her memory. I, I don't think that's it's the way to do it. To it. Yeah. Like All right, I'm showing you a text message and the number. Uh, prosecutors 9311 April 20th 2019 Thank you. I'm going to ask you to look at item number 9311 This is April 2019 did you say? Yeah. Nope. Okay. And ask for you to read that um, just I, read it to yourself, oh, okay. just to refresh the, your just memory. Just the little yellow post-it thing? No. This, can just I just sure point I it right out to a judge to say something? Yes, go ahead. Point it out where you wanted to read. Okay. This is to Rosanna, correct? Yes. This is you talking, correct? Okay. Yes. Bought cameras. No, I said that I did to my friend months before. So, but there was no cameras purchased. So you lied to your friend about purchasing cameras because yeah. you thought justice was a threat. Justin was a threat. Yeah, I, was, I feel like she was worried about me to make her feel better. I said, "Don't worry, we have cameras. We're fine." We later did get cameras, but it wasn't until months after. You take this. But you'll agree that there was a text message between you and Miss Williams where you indicated on April 20th, 2019, that you bought cameras last night to plant in the Just barn. Mr. Belenkis. Yeah. You just refreshed a recollection. And, and I, that, I know, Judge Briggs. I know, but and that now... Now I'm impeaching her with her, her recollection because it says here they claim... Well, no, don't, don't, don't read it. That's the whole issue. Okay. Well, you use that to impeach her credibility, right, yes. and, and refresh her recollection. Right. And I you're agree. saying her last statement that she said is not accurate yes. about what's in there? Yes, Judge. Absolutely. Did you tell her that you planted cameras in the apartment and the barn? Is this the thing you just showed yes, me? The thing Judge, it, it doesn't say the apartment. It says our apartment. Yes, exactly. Our He's apartment. leaving out key words yeah. every time that he reads these text messages Judge, to the witness. All right, all right Mr. Mr. Shellhorn, if you have an issue, it's not to be said in front of the jurors. All I right? understand. I, I, I understand. But just say you want to be heard at sidebar. And you have to make sure you read everything accurately. Yes, sir. On that day, to Miss Williams, did you say Justin is a threat, a big one? We bought cameras last night at Home Depot to plant in the barn and in our apartment so we can always see what Justin is doing and saying. Yes, I said I wrote that. I lied to my friend so she wouldn't be worried. There was a situation with Justin that she knew about. I didn't want her to worry. I just told her, don't worry about it. Got cameras, handles, and that was it. Now, at some point, you know that Bob Michael Barrison knows that you're recording him, correct? Yeah, about five months later, four months later, that was April, correct? So, the the shooting the day he came to shoot us and kill us was that was August seventh, um, August seventh. 
So yes, yeah, so several months later is when we purchased the cameras, if that's what you're asking. Is that what you asked? I have no idea. Yeah, what, what, I, what, okay. Hold on, just listen to the question and, and try to answer only the question. As I said earlier, if you don't understand, yes. just say, I don't understand, can you rephrase? Okay, yes, All right. Yes. I'll rephrase it, Judge. All right, I think you should, go ahead. You, at some point you buy cameras, correct? Yes. At some point you start tape recording private conversations, correct? By cameras, yes. Tape recording private conversations, yes, I guess that would be an accurate statement, yes. Okay, and at some point prior to the shooting, mm -hmm. after you started tape recording private conversations, you became aware that Michael Barrison <laughs> believed or knew that you were doing that to him. Um, I'm guessing I told the police. I, I'm guessing. I don't know. I don't know what he was aware of. I have no way of knowing that. Sorry. On August 5th, two days before the shooting, did you tell your father in a text message, and I confirmed for sure that they know we have a bug in the barn. Did you make that statement to your father? Probably, yes. It's in a text message. I, I made the statement. You're asking, did I make it? I'm asking you. Rather you, than someone else? No. I'll show you this. Okay. Good night. 100 C8, specific item 42. Mm -hmm. Please look at this specific text. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm, I'm going to go there. I just want to be for that so there's some context. And does that refresh your recollection as to whether or not you became aware that Michael Barrison knew or at least thought that you were recording his private conversations? No, well, I think it indicates what it indicates, which is that I told a police officer this, so I figured probably it might have gotten back to him. They wanted to continue having those conversations in front of my locker. That's, they now know. Like I said, we were trying to do things as legally as possible. Okay. But I can't know what Michael was thinking or what was actually told to him. Well, what did you I'm mean? I'm talking to my father here in text message, so. What did you mean when you used the word, and I confirmed for sure that they know we have a bug in the barn? What did you mean by the term, Confirmed for sure. I meant that I told the police officer, meaning that I figured that if it were some problem, they would know about it. Even if it weren't a problem, they might tell. Like, I didn't know, like, police protocol. So it was made, it's just an assumption. I was writing to my father, again, in the context of that whole conversation, I would say that it would make sense for me to say that, which we didn't get into that. Now let's go back to July 25th. Okay. Did you post a no, uh, another lengthy post regarding Mary Haskins and Michael Barrison? Probably. It's 11 days after the first <coughs> one that I read about the king and the queen. And how many days before the trigger? 11 days after the first one that you read. Okay. How many days before the shooting was this? This one is 
July 25th. Okay, I was just confirming how many days later I was almost killed. Continue, I'm sorry. And, and by the way, did the prosecutor ever ask you for the receipt from your Amazon account to I determine gonna, when you got those recorders? I wouldn't know. Like I said, I was in a coma for four days in the ICU for three weeks, unable to speak because I had a ventilator shut down my throat. Okay. And after that, I was on so many pain medications, I really couldn't communicate with anyone. <coughs> so I have no idea what was said or done. Like, my life was almost ended. Do you recall saying words to the effect that uh, it turns out once a home wrecker, always a home wrecker? Were you referring to Mary Haskins? Absolutely. Did you then say words to the effect that then said home wrecker realized if a man did it to his wife, wives, what's to stop him from straying again? Did you say that? Yep, and there's, I think, six more chapters. I know them all. All right, and, and, then, no and then did you say immediately after that, here's where paranoia and jealousy set in? Yes, did you say that? I'm familiar with the post, yes. And, and it's your <laughs> belief that Mary Haskins was jealous of you? Um, I think she was jealous of a lot of people, and it was just an insecurity that she had. That was That was my belief, yes. And did you say a little bit later on in that post, we're talking about Barrison and Mary Haskins, did you say it's war? Probably. Mr. Belinkus, when you characterize something, don't you characterize it. That's what it says. It's war. No, no, no. Before that. You're saying who she's talking about. Okay. You're not testifying. Well, she is. Okay. Ask her that question. Right. Understood. The previous statement that I read, you were referring to Barrison and Mary Haskins, correct? Can you read the previous statement again so I'm sure? What's to stop him from straying again? He, here's where paranoia and jealousy set in. Yes, that's a statement that I wrote. You wrote that, and it's about Barrison and Haskins, correct? Correct. And then soon after that, you basically make a statement, and correct me if I'm wrong, where you say, it's war, correct? Yeah, probably. I'd say so. And, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but going to war was against Barrison and Mary Haskins, correct? I mean, I don't know. You didn't read. I only got the one sentence. I didn't get the whole context. So I don't exactly know. I'm were you sure. About, were you I'm talking sure about the, going to war against anyone else during this period I mean, of time? No, but like I'm, I, I'm, all I'm bringing up is that I feel that maybe some context was left out, but. It's fine, we can just go with, yes, I wrote that, I meant that, that's fine, we can move on, not go back to the, All right. the context. Just, right. ma'am, just answer the question. Okay, I'm sorry. All right. Now, and this is a post that a lot of people are looking at, correct? Well, how does she know that? Because it's Facebook well, judge and she well, knows No, 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 no. Just focus on the issues, and, and the issue, how many times, Mr. Blank, is, is not everyone. Understood. So what other people know is not really relevant. Did you say in that state that you will publicly announce using your special talents for collecting indisputable evidence? Or words to that effect? Yes. Did you tell whoever saw this Facebook post later on to fasten their seat belts. Yes. A story like this, even told at a distance, may cause whiplash. It's that bad. Yes, I did definitely said that. Including 
extra stories that could only be heard in recordings or videos to be fully believed. Yes. So on this day, which is July 25th, mm -hmm. you're telling whoever's reading this that you have evidence, videos, and recordings, correct? I thought the sentence was, um, could you read the sentence again, actually? Extra stories could only be heard in a recording or video to be fully believed. You talked about recordings and videos, correct? We talked about that they could only be believed if they were in a recording or a video, which is what led us to later get those two very things, to make sure they would be believed. Did you say towards the end, even a one-time Olympian can be cut down to size? Yes. And then, oh yes, a war, I fear, may be inevitable. Yes. And then at the very end, I'll need all the calm of the Dead Sea to stop me from totally going totally ballistic. Probably, yes. Now, Michael Barrison was living in his home uh, at the facility, correct, when you came back uh, in the summer of 2019, correct? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm unclear. Okay. The facility, the... The, the... the farm. Well, he was living in one place the year before, and then another place the year after. So okay. was... I'm talking about the summer of... 2019, yes. when you uh, you were living with your, your boyfriend in the upstairs apartment. Correct. Okay. Michael Barrison was living on the main floor there. Yes. With Mary Haskins and their small child, correct? Yes. Uh, yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, that, that was his house, correct? Um, I, I assume that was at the time, yes. You, you were living in an apartment and, and were not paying him any rent, correct? Mm -hmm. For the apartment. We were paying, we were, it was a barter agreement. Right. Right. And, and, and when you say the barter agreement, you were paying to, to board two horses at $2,500 a piece um, at that point, correct? Plus, uh, I think, I believe $40,000 I had just given him for a horse he was unable to sell, plus um, the work that my boyfriend had done along the barn in the house, which Michael said was going to be compensated. Um, and part of that compensation was that we have the housing and whatever, although that was established the year before. And that <coughs> the main part of it would be when my other horse that I had purchased would come overseas so Michael could train her. Um, he chose the facility she would be quarantined at. So yes, we were paying a lot of money, more than just the $5,000 that you said, to be living in that apartment. There was the work done, like I mentioned. There was the money given to him for the horse that he couldn't sell. And so yes, we were, living, we were living in a house and paying money, yes. Again. Let's break this down, if, if we could. Sure. When you first come to his facility, mm -hmm. you only have two horses, correct? When I first come, yes. And the agreement was mm -hmm. that you would pay $5,000 for those two horses, mm -hmm. and he agreed to give you living accommodations, correct? Training of those two horses. Right. Living accommodations. And 40. Yeah. 
Sorry, boarding. Yeah, boarding, yes, correct. Okay, so that's the deal that, did you cut that deal or did your father cut that deal? Um, it was a joint, I guess, conversation and discussion. Well, who pays for the boarding? What do you mean? Who pays the $5,000, you or your I, father? It comes out of my money and my father writes the check. And where does he get the money from? The, the bank. Okay. So your father's taking the money out of your account or his account? My account. And what's the yeah, relevance? Does it, does it matter, Mr. Belinkus? What's the relevance of this? Okay, I'll move on. So the original deal was that he would board and train your horses and give you living accommodations, correct? Correct. That original agreement did not include your boyfriend living on the property, did it? Um, I told Michael I was bringing my boyfriend and then I had two dogs. I wanted to make sure he knew that in case there was a pet issue or whatever. He sat on the phone in an hour long conversation, no problem. And then he sent a text to my father, which read something like, she's gonna love the apartment, they're gonna love it. Um, it's so wonderful, it even has antiques. My father then sent me that message, I read it. I said, all right, sounds like a plan. I guess I can't really say no to this offer. It's too good to be true or refused, and we took the offer, gratefully. Did you ever tell the prosecutors that in the beginning you didn't know your boyfriend were coming? I don't know. I don't think so, but I could not be sure. So when you came up from Florida after the winter of 2018, mm -hmm. how many horses were you boarding when you first came up? When I first came to meet Michael, you mean? Yes, in New Jersey. In New how many actual horses were in his stable? Two. The same two from Florida. Okay. So, and, and the same arrangement basically held true, correct? Correct, until things changed, yes. Boarding two horses for $5,000 mm -hmm. and a living accommodation, correct? Correct. Okay. And then there came a time when you brought in two more horses, correct? There came a time when I purchased a horse from Michael, making that the third horse, or sorry, making that third horse. Correct. So that was a horse that Michael wanted off his hands. I paid for the horse. We agreed that I paid for the horse. The horse gets to stay where he's lived his whole life and no change is made. Training will be included because the horse has shivers. He's got a lot of health issues, yada yada. Bottom line, I say, Michael, here, I'm going to give you this money for this horse. He's got these issues, but he shouldn't be moved from his home. So I buy the horse from Michael. He then says, okay, you know, you just buy the horse. He'll keep the stall. You'll keep taking lessons on him like usual. Nothing changes. Okay, now what's so, the name of that horse? JT. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. You're making it sound as if you took some lame horse off, horse off his hands. Mm -hmm. That's, that's your position? My position is that the horse had issues, health issues, serious ones, including Cushing's, um, shivers. Um, I can name a bunch of other things, really bad case of shivers. Um, and yes, I bought the horse because I had ridden him all the time. Others didn't get along with him. I did. I fell in love with the damn horse, excuse my language. Um, and I bought him. And Michael agreed that it was probably best because probably he wouldn't get anywhere near the money he would have gotten had the horse not had these issues. So I bought him, paid a lot of money for him, kept him, and then Michael invited me to bring yet another horse and then yet another horse, but I guess. Okay, let's, let's talk about JT. Okay, sure. All right, but before we do that, can I see counsel at the bench, please? Hi, 
Mr. Balenkis, go to another area, please. All right, so 2019, you have two horses. You buy JT, which makes a third horse, correct? Correct. You're still only paying $5,000, correct? $5,000 plus the 30 or 40 that I just paid Michael for the horse that I got from him, yes. Okay, but that, that has nothing to do with the monthly fee that you're paying. That's a no, purchase, that, that's correct? correct? It's not a monthly fee. That was a one-time payment. Okay. Done. Finished. Horse sold. Okay. Finished. And, and then you get another horse, correct? No, I already have. Well, no, I already own those horses. Did you bring another horse to Barrisones? Yes, I bought a fourth horse. Named when Symphony. was that? When was that? May. Um, it, there's a post on Facebook actually, so you should have it, um, where she actually arrived that day, and what day? like whatever the day it was, maybe June seventh, I want to say. Um, no, I don't remember. Oh, the word I don't know. Okay, I, I don't sometime recall. in June, correct? I believe in June. It might have been a bit earlier. And, and can I assume that you? Started paying another twenty five. Mr. Belinkus, I just ruled on this. Judge, this is not I, I find this not relevant. For the reasons I just stated at sidebar. Judge, this is totally different. All right, Mr. Uh, Belinkus, move on. My ruling stands. I don't find it relevant. Ms. Kanarek, at, at some point in time, you start bad-mouthing Michael Barrison to people in the industry and on social media, correct? Correct. Um, you, you tell people that he abuses and neglects the horses, correct? I don't know if I said all of that, but it could be correct. It did happen, so I might have said it. You, you even called him a, a criminal. I don't believe I called him criminal. It's possible, though. I'm not going to say it never happened. Well, did you claim that that flood that occurred at the farmhouse when he was in Florida with Mary Haskins was an insurance scam. Yeah, I probably claimed that on Facebook somewhere. Yes. You, you probably, you don't have a specific recollection no. of telling people that he committed insurance fraud? No, I only had the specific recollection of what he himself said about it. I don't remember whether or not I decided to go blabbing on Facebook about it that day or not. Maybe I did. I sometimes do. Not my best choice. But it could have happened. Now, and you realize that insurance fraud is a crime, correct? Oh, yes, I realize that. And so when I ask you the question, did you accuse him of a crime, you realize by calling him someone who's committed insurance fraud that that is accusing him of a crime, correct? I mean, yeah, I did go to the police about it and report him. You know, because then if I didn't have exact proof, I don't want to be accused of making some of the erroneous report. So I was expressing my feelings on it based on what we had heard him say to us himself. And we very much believed that at one point he did not want the information that we had about that getting out. All right. Well, then you told everybody on social media whatever you thought you had, correct? Probably. Now, you contacted Safe Sport, the town, mm -hmm. uh, maybe other agencies. Uh, did you ever contact the insurance company and give them this evidence that you had? No, I did speak to the insurance adjuster, though, and he made it very clear that he had some, I don't know, uh, I don't know how to articulate it. He had some arrangement with Michael 
and you could not discuss it, and he left. But we were, I just wanted to ask him a couple of questions, and he wasn't having it, so I left it alone at that point. You just said that you were aware of the fact that Michael Barrison d didn't even negotiate the fraud claim. There was a private injustice that did that. Correct? I'm sorry. You talked to him. There was private. somebody that said they were a private Judge, injustice. I'm going to object at this point to the relevance. Of I think this is getting far afield. Judge, I'm just questioning her answers to the questions as to what she knew and what she said. Well, it, it, you brought out that she accused him of insurance fraud. Now, the That's what's relevant, so move on. Sustained. Now, three days before the shooting, were you posting on Facebook that everything from my life, livelihood, and even writing career have all been threatened should I refuse to adhere to the things I've been put through constantly. Mm -hmm. I did, yes. Like that. And, and who was threatening your <coughs> life? And livelihood, as you read, um, Michael Barrison and his girlfriend, Mary Haskins. And, and how were they doing that? Several ways. They were calling barns and trainers from Michael's higher up, powerful, like Olympian friends to your average, you know, next door barn, telling them that we're menaces, we're torturing them, we're terrors. And then at the same time, you know, making it like we need to leave or they didn't want us there. So I guess in the best way to describe it is it was, it was like a trying, they were trying to, we felt they were trying to like trap us there saying, Oh, you know, you have to leave. My girlfriend doesn't like you, but oh yeah, you also can't go anywhere else because you've been calling every single place, telling them don't take their horses. That was happening. Yeah. Um, then the girlfriend was calling, not just calling. Um, Michael and the girlfriend weren't just calling. They were actually going so far as to cyber stalk my, all of my social media pages back to up to like five years to see if I'd ever had a conflict with anyone and then get that person involved in this dispute. Whether I'd not spoken to that person in five years, two years, 10 years, it didn't matter. They were doing things that were not okay by any of the governing bodies of the sport, by any of the governing bodies of all the sports, and quite frankly, by the law, since they were cyber stalking my page. When you say cyber stalking your page, First of all, you that indicated that they were contact, contacting people that knew you, correct? I don't know who, among them, yes. Okay. And also okay. other people. Michael wrote um, in a text message to someone. How did you in, see the text message? Twitter. It was posted publicly on Twitter. Okay. That Michael posted literally these words. I'm a very big guy in the Olympics. I have a lot of power here or whatever. Um, I, I'm good friends with the head counts, with the CEO, Murray Kessler, um, and the chief of staff, or the chief counsel, Sonia Keating. I have a lot of power there. Like, basically, once you've gone to the Olympics, you have all this power. So, um, you know, I'm going to be able to do whatever I want. Encouraging this he person. He said, I'm going to be able to do whatever I want in that Twitter. Something like that. I, I'm paraphrasing most of these things. You know, like you sort of have a little bit, but um, <laughs> yes, in the instance that you're discussing, yes, on Twitter it's public, posted publicly, the text message that Michael Barson wrote to this person saying, Mary Haskins said she found you online, she's never met you. I'm this big guy in Olympic sports, I have a lot of friends, I'm good best friends or good friends with the head counsel, Murray Kessler, who's the CEO. Um, I'm, oh, the lead counsel, Sonia Keating, good friend as well. Basically asserting his power, and he's this big Olympian who can bully us peons into submission in whatever way he wants on an anger tan or temper tantrum. 
and get others involved in doing it, which to save sport is an abuse of power, which to the law, I'm sure, is cyber-stalking, I don't know, and to USEF, our oversight body, would also be weaponization of the oversight body and a violation of their code, right. as and, he well and, knows. And you think that by him contacting these people and, and, and talking to them about you and what is going on, specifically the postings that you're making, the mm -hmm. bad-mouthing that you're doing of him and that all his stuff, that there's something inappropriate with him checking you out or conducting an investigation as to who you really are? I'm sorry, I missed, I missed the question in that. That's the reason that you just stated in your last answer is the reason why you claimed in this post that your life and livelihood have all been threatened. Yes, when an Olympian blatantly says to someone in a text message, I am going to ruin this person's life. Who said that? Michael said it. He said... There is a text out there or any post... Can, can you let, let her finish, okay. Mr. Belenkis, please? I'll withdraw the question. Is there any Actually, yeah, I do believe there is a text out there okay. that he wrote. Okay. Did you give that text to the prosecutor for him to no. use in this court courtroom? No, I did not. Where is that text that you just said Michael Barrison said he was going to ruin your life? Well, we heard him saying it. We heard he texted people this, saying he's going to ruin our lives and, quote, find a way to make our lives hell. We got wind of the fact that he was, in fact, doing that when we spoke to another person who I'm not going to bring into at the moment. Um, I'm sure will come in later. Um, but, like I said, for all the world to see, he put on display by texting this woman that he is this big guy in Olympics and that she, in fact, a person who's not even a horse person, should immediately call these go uh, go uh, sorry, oversight bodies and make complaints against us and this is a person that I had a personal dispute with that ended years prior and was telling her, make this complaint and don't worry, it's okay. I'm a big guy in Olympic sports. No one's going to... That's what. That's how what the was, text reads. What was that? I'm sorry, what, what was the question? Was, was that? Don't even think about going there, Mr. Belenkis. Move on. Okay. We're going down a rabbit hole okay. here. Move I need, on. I need a yes or no answer if, if you can answer that way. Is there a text message to support what you just said in your last answer where Michael Barrison said he was going to destroy your life? Um, yes or no? I, if I recall correctly, there is. Okay. I would, not, I would not swear my life on it. Those exact words were used, but I would testify that some words that effect were used in the text. And did you tell that to Prosecutor Shel Shelhorn? I don't know. I honestly don't remember. I mean, we have I'm all sure of his... many conversations. You're aware of the fact that we have all of his Texas, your Texas, mm -hmm. Mary Haskins' Texas? Well, Judge, I don't, I don't know that that's accurate. That yeah, have... Mr. Belenkis, ignore that, members of the jury. Ask another question, please. Would it surprise you to know that Michael Barrison doesn't have a Twitter account? No, it wouldn't surprise me. He has a Facebook account, though. Well, you just said you saw it on Twitter, correct? Yes, I saw it posted by another person on Twitter. Another person? Yes, a text made by Michael Barrison to this person, and this person posted a, screen, a photo of that message on Twitter. In fact, there were several of them. Some of them are still there. Some have been deleted in screenshot. Some are still there right now. Right, let's, let me ask you this. Did you ever post something regarding Barrison and Mary Haskins and then delete it? Not that I recall, unless uh, Facebook took it down or um, a site that thought that the post was inappropriate if I edit or delete it. I do not recall deleting any posts. That's more Mary Haskins thing. No. You just talked about having uh, or listening to recorded conversations between Michael Barrison and his staff concerning you. Mm -hmm. um, did there come a time 
when you would use those words to taunt him. His own words. To taunt him? Yes. No, no, we're not called that. Oh, would, what do you call when you pay post private conversations that someone has on social media? Um, do you think that that would have an impact right, on the answer can, the question? Yes. Uh, how many questions? Just one at a time. Let her answer, and then you ask a follow-up. I would think that since in those very recordings that you're speaking of, he literally says... Listen, I'm not asking you what he said. Well, I'm asking you... Mr. Belenkis. She's not answering the question, Judge. I, I don't know because you cut her off. I don't know if she's answering it or not. I'll withdraw the question. And ask I think you should withdraw and move on to another area. Well, Ms. Cataract, yes. did you post private conversations that you recorded of Michael Barrison on social media? Yes, I did. Did you text him some of the private conversations that you had recorded? I don't think so. Maybe. I can't imagine I would text him. I recorded you saying this, no. but I don't know. I, I don't know the answer. I'm sorry. Let's turn to August 6th, the day before the shooting. Okay. Um, I, do I have the... No. I'm, okay. I'm going to ask you some questions with regards to a Facebook post that was posted for everyone to see. And this is, I'm sorry. And, it, and this is the one where you start off where you say, some advice to all couples, never give an ultimatum. Do yeah, you remember the, that post? This is the post you just read a few seconds ago. No, this is the, totally different. Is. The six this chapters. is August 6th. Well, why, yes. don't you, why don't you show it to us so we can get it clear? Showing your Facebook post, page 3135. Yes. And I'll point to you now. I think that's page 3135 of S402. Just so the record is clear about what is being shown. Which page is this? This is this Read this. Is this your Facebook post that goes on to the second page? Yes, this is the one where you read about the homewrecker girlfriend and VK. No, this, this, is, this, is, this is a different one. August 6th. Is, yes, the sixth chapter post that we read, talked about. No. We haven't gone over this one. This is okay. another one. Okay, you say so. I'll, I'll take your word for it. Okay, August 6th, 2019. Mm -hmm. Now, you start off this social media post by saying, never give an ultimatum. Mm -hmm. Did you hear anyone in your secret recordings give Michael an ultimatum? I have no idea. Probably. Actually, yes, I did. But in, I don't know how direct they were. I don't know how to answer that question. It, yes, there, there are ultimatums given. And, and you notes. heard that in private conversations. Correct. Who were the ultimatums given by? Mary Haskin, in some cases. Um, Michael, I believe, and some other. Mary DeFranco, and quite a few. And these were all captured from your locker in the stable area? That's correct. They would all gather on the bench and discuss things. Why they were doing it in front of my locker, I couldn't say. But, I mean, there are horses walking by, so horses not, typically don't go in living areas. Have you listened to all these tapes? There's not horses going by in Mark, Mr. Mr. Belinkus. Okay. I'll Come on. En enough of the comments, please. Just ask a question, get an answer, ask another question. With regards to this post, which is the day before the shooting, mm -hmm. you're talking about, and correct me if I'm wrong, people that give ultimatums tend to be miserable and insecure people, correct? Correct.
and, and again, you say, and correct me if I'm wrong, numerous world-class show animals and even managed to get the human husband on an alternate list for a coveted spot in the Olympics and produce winning competitors prior. And you, you put in uh, parentheses, again, just a random example. When you, you are, but you're reading from it, then you, when, yes, when you posted yes. things like that, did you intentionally make a statement and, and try to cover your tracks with a, another statement like, that's only examples, I'm not talking about you, or using metaphors? Did you try to disguise who you were talking about? Probably. So that it wouldn't be... So I'll just leave it at yes, probably. Yeah, that would make sense. But, but will you agree with me that it's clear in this post that you're talking about Barrison and Haskins? It's clear to me, yes. And, or to anybody that knows Barrison or Haskins, correct? And that knows I'm training with them, and that's where I'm located, and that had they made these phone calls bad-mouthing us for what we believe is no reason, they might come to my page and say, okay, there's another side of the story. Okay. And I wouldn't have to say a name or out anybody so that anyone else would know. But those people that we discussed were getting phone calls that were not involved in anything going on would maybe come to my page and say, okay, I, um, there's more to this than what we're hearing from their side at the moment. And, and, and is it true that when you're making these posts, you always try to qualify things to a certain extent, extent to protect yourself, correct? Yeah, probably, okay. yeah. Like, for instance, where you said here, upon this hypothetical husband, in quotes, mm -hmm. return, he had in tow with him a much younger woman who hosted said clinic. Not pretty on the outside or nice on the inside. Just spiteful, adulterous, and insecure. Did you say that about Mary Haskins? Yes. Did you say that uh, after the divorce, that Mary Haskins, she began discussing plans to remodel the home her boyfriend once shared with his wife? Mr. Belenkis, let me see that sidebar, please.
fine. Move on, Mr. Blinkus. Or is this a good time to break, Mr. Blinkus? It's 425. I think it is. All right. It's my wife's. Well, we don't. We don't need to get into that. We'll just, just tell me yes. It's time to break. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll break for today. Please don't discuss the case. All right, we'll see you tomorrow morning, same time. Step down, man. You just wait outside. Just don't walk down that end. Just stay, stay down this end until the prosecutor comes out. Sure. All right, thank you. Mr. Blankus, don't ever comment to the jury about anything in your personal life. All right? It's inappropriate. It, I, I know, but it's not it's not necessary. It's just not it's completely unnecessary. That and it's my it, wife's Yeah, now. yes, no, it's well, why do they have to know that? Why do they have to know that? It is a big deal. It is a big deal. You shouldn't have any communications with the jury.